So, Sophia, tell me how um, you came to making this doc- documentary. What, 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 what gave you the idea of, um, to make this documentary? Um, well, in the 90s, I was part of like the rave scene and all that. And it was all a bit sort of asexual and a bit like monoculture and stuff. And then at the beginning of the noughties, I kind of stumbled into this field in Glastonbury. And the real inspiration was seeing loads of women being really like exciting and visually, like aesthetically, it was like amazing Mm -hmm. and something really fresh and new. So I thought I was going to make a film about kind of how women were like reclaiming sexuality turned out to be something completely different but um that was the original sort of starting place okay and um tell me a little bit about the 90s and the scene at Glastonbury then what how is it different to now so back then it had a really really different kind of brand if you like it didn't have the kind of super brand thing that it is now it didn't sell out in minutes and one of the things Michael Levis who's in the film sort of always said was that Las Vegas which was the area that I was sort of interested in and filming really saved Glastonbury so it, it had this kind of slightly bad reputation about being quite you know quite druggy and quite sort of traveler um conflicts with um with the fence and all that and then along came this like really exciting um things like a ballroom and a casino where you could dress up which back then you know people weren't dressing up and going to festivals it was mud and wellies and all that sort of stuff so it changed the face of glastonbury oh interesting yeah that's what i was going to ask you do you think glastonbury has lost its spark I don't know because you know these things move on and it's been going 50 years it will be 50 years in 2020 so to keep something moving for that long is pretty impressive and inevitably you know there are changes and ebbs and flows in culture so no I don't think it's lost its spark it's changed direction we all know that you don't need me to say that so yeah I still think it's an exciting creative place and what what does this documentary explore what 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 can people see if they came to watch this documentary what what journey would it take them on so it's kind of got two things one is the kind of history of Glastonbury from the mid 90s through right up until now and then the other thing is so another thing was that at the other sort of storyline is about uh, the man who kind of created it called Roy Gervitz and he made Las Vegas happen with loads of people and so you kind of see his personal journey and how he created something really amazing but then couldn't quite cope with the amazingness and it sort of exploded. So yeah so it's kind of a journey of you know how we how uh, sort of anarchy and all that excitement can sort of be taken over and transform and become something else and it changes and describe your documentary in three words in three words yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) Uh, unseen Glastonbury story like I said I thought I was gonna just film some kind of crazy acts and thought it was kind of going to be a fun film about you know burlesque and cabaret and I filmed that for like four or five years and then kind of got a bit like what am I filming here but I was always filming Roy and 14 years later um, I finally managed to finish it so it's a 14 year story which I think makes it kind of quite a bit more sort of unusual in that sense definitely I think the best documentaries are the ones that happen over a long period of time because you get so much information in so for me I'm quite surprised that I'm actually going to be learning about the history of Glastonbury not just this one tent yeah I think that's something that's really surprised us because we've done a few like screenings and uh, previewed at Sheffield Doc Fest last year um, sorry premiered there and um, I thought it would all be people like my age in their early 40s late 30s but I had like 19 year olds 20 year olds kind of coming up to me and going wow I had no idea you know they all thought that Glastonbury had always been this big sellout success but it hadn't you know so I think for them it's been a real like oh I didn't know that's where it all started. Where can people come and see this documentary? Well we're previewing tonight here at the Everyman Music Film Festival but after this there's a whole sort of set of dates up and down the country in Brighton in Sheffield as well as in London also in Bristol so all around the country in Cardiff and Wales and everywhere so check it out. 